Hi there, my name is Lana Fillingham. I have been campaigning for the last six years to improve toilet facilities throughout the country. So how do you get into um, campaigning for toilets? Well, I have a daughter who is now 11 years old. Um, she has severe physical and learning disabilities. When she was five years old, I was taking her to places and I was still having to use the baby change um, and that involved me lifting her out of her wheelchair at the time and um, trying to change her on the baby change. And what I realised was that although that was OK while she was five year old and to be fair, she was a very small five year old, um, that that would not be um, something that we could do in the long term. So I started looking about um, and seeing with, whether there was any alternative kind of toilet facility out there. And I came across the Changing Places Toilet campaign. Now, if anybody has not heard of Changing Places Toilets, the difference between an accessible toilet and a Changing Places Toilet is that a Changing Places Toilet has a lot more space for carers. It has a, um, a hoist so that you can um, lift out um, a per disabled person from a wheelchair without having to physically lift and it also has an adult changing bench. Now when I started campaigning um, there was only two of these in our local area um, and there were sort of like separate ends of our local county so they weren't in a lot of the places that um, I would expect a toilet to be provided for me if I was to go out somewhere. None of our museums had a changing places facility, our hospital still doesn't have a changing places toilet facility. Um, so all the places where I would expect a toilet to be provided for, um, they, they just weren't, there weren't any there. I began to hear horror stories of um, parents having to change disabled children on toilet floors and I knew that I wasn't going to I didn't want that to happen for my daughter, not just the fact of actually having to lay her on the toilet floor, but I used to work as a nurse. And so I know that just physically lifting um, a disabled person in and out of a wheelchair um, is the worst thing that you can do for your back. So it's it, it, it has um, a sense of jeopardy both for the carer and for the disabled person being phys physically lifted. I... Um, looked into how I could improve this and I set up a petition back in 2015 to make changing places toilets mandatory in the building regulations in the larger public buildings where I would expect a toilet to be provided for me if I were to go there. So that was like I say 2015 it's six years ago. Um, one of my first um, actual victories as it were was that um, not long after I had set up my petition, I had 2,000 signatures at the time, um, I went onto the local media and it, it got um, seriously highlighted on the local news and that really threw um, a challenge to my local authority to actually do something in our local area. And they actually did put um, a changing places um, clause into their local planning policy. So 2015, we had two changing places toilets in our local area. We now are in double figures for the amount of changing places toilets we have, which means that most places I go to um, around and about, um, my daughter can be toileted with um, dignity. Now, I continued to campaign. Um, I, I joined up with other campaigners. We, um, we spread the petition. We all appeared um, on media um, from time to time um, but what was becoming quite clear is that although people were complaining about it and people knew about it that the, it was a, it was going to be a slow um, process and um, the people that were signing my petition and um, the comments that are on it um, I can still see all those comments now and it was it is partly what keeps me going to continue um, campaigning um, if you haven't got the toilets you need you are restricting people's freedom so a toilet is a ticket to freedom and not many people think about it in those terms 
for disabled children they were having to be physically lifted and being changed on public toilet floors or in the back of cars. Without a toilet, disabled teenagers and disabled adults were either having to sit in their own body fluids for prolonged periods of time. Um, I've heard stories of people having unnecessary surgery to have their continence needs met when they're out and about in the community. And I've also heard of people self-medicating to ensure that they did not need to use the toilet when they're out and about in the local community. Um, it's, it's not good enough. We're in the 21st century and disabled kids are still being laid on um, public toilet floors. Um, as my campaign progressed further, um, I obviously got my MP involved. I got other people to write to their MPs. Um, and in the end, back in 2018, I delivered my petition to Downing Street. And it had over 50,000 signatures um, by that point. That um, also resulted in meetings with a couple of government ministers. So I met with um, one of the health secretaries, Caroline Dynage, and um, I also met Rishi Sunak in his previous role as Minister for Communities, Housing and Local Government. And both these meetings helped to result in some um, funding. In the case of Rishi Sunak, he finally um, gave us £30 million for changing places toilets, um, which the funding has just actually just closed. Um, we, the campaign still continues because we have managed to get changing places um, mandatory in um, Scotland and in England. Wales and Northern Ireland are still consorting and hopefully they will have, um, they will make their, um, it mandatory in their um, buildings too. What I would like to say is that I realise it also that it wasn't just families that were struggling with this. People who signed my petition, there was teachers, there was occupational therapists, there were social workers, all of whom who knew about this issue. And they were having the same issues when they were going out on school trips. They knew of families who were struggling to go out. And um, all of this evidence, it, it, it felt like a really, really symbolic thing to do. But I had all the comments um, when I met the government ministers, I had all the comments printed out. And it felt like I handed them over because I knew that I could go and say what I wanted to say, but my voice on its own was just like a whisper in the wind. But if I took everybody else's voices with me and all of that evidence, then it's, it becomes became a shout. So there was all this evidence there of people struggling in their day-to-day -day life to access um public toilets to access a toilet that actually meets their needs without stealing their actual dignity. We have come a long way, um, but there is still a lot more to do. Um, there are only still 1,600 um, changing places toilets, registered changing places toilets in the whole of the UK. Now, that might sound a lot. But when you compare that the fact that Wembley Stadium alone has 2,500 toilets, you realise how small 1,600 toilets are. It's We've got a long way to go to get toilet equity and for people being able to go out, live their lives without the worry and stress of whether there's going to be a toilet um, at the places that they go to. So um, I would like to ask you um, as well, to help spread awareness. There are multiple ways of spreading awareness, whether writing to your MP and saying that this isn't good enough anymore, or writing to your local tourist attractions and asking, have you got a changing places toilet? And if not, when are you planning to install? Um, what I'm hoping to do is to um, put a template together to, um, to put forward with this little video, so that um, if any of you just want to use that to actually um, approach places then there's something that helps you and can make it a five minute job rather than a half an hour's half an hour's job other people fellow campaigners um have done things like luathons um and 
um, there's especially I'm just going to mention the Norfolk Clue lady, um, Emma, who um, actually sat on a toilet on a float and went around on, on a carnival just to um, to uh, bring attention to the fact that um, about the changing places toilets. And I have just been involved. Um, I had a conversation a few years ago um, with a an art, a disabled artist, and the result of that conversation is that there is now a ten meter um, inflatable sculpture that is um, it's currently in Scunthorpe, which is my hometown. It's in the art gallery in Scunthorpe, but it, the plan is for it to go touring um, round. Um, the rest of the country and potentially on an international scale so we can actually meet um get people thinking about it in other countries that haven't even thought it's maybe not even on their radar yet um but if you can go and see that it's actually got the changing places toilet um a quote from us and a quote from myself on the um on the tunnel that leads through the sculpture And I'm not saying that anybody else needs to to do this, sit on a toilet in public or anything else, but please do. If you're going somewhere, um, if you're taking a school trip out, if you're taking residents out uh, somewhere, ask where the changing places toilet is. And if they haven't got one, ask when um, when are they thinking of um, installing one? Because there are countries and even at... Um, Sorry, there are towns, I should say, not countries. There are towns in this, um, still in the UK that don't have a single change in places facility. And that's not good enough in the 21st century. No one should have to lie on a public toilet floor. Let's, let, let's make it happen. Let's, let's get change. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>